Good morning and welcome back to Adventurous Way. We are expecting the excavators back on site tomorrow, or in fact actually the excavators are here on site already, but the people are not. The crew is working at another job, so although the machines are here they won't be back to use them until tomorrow. But when they are back we've got a lot of things we want to do with them, so today we're trying to get ready for that. So lots of little jobs to do today. The first one is to unload all of these materials. So I picked these up uh, at Home Depot uh, a few days ago and they've been in the back of the truck ever since. These are supplies for the septic and the well. So we've got some drain pipe in here, we've got some conduit, electrical conduit. We have a galvanized steel pipe here that we'll be using to make the T-handle to lower our well pump into, into the well. And we have a four by four and a six by four that we're gonna be using to make some, some pedestals. They need to be unloaded from the truck bed. Then once I've done that, I am going to remove the chipper from the back of the tractor. So we used that last week and you may remember when we had the electrical poles in, there were still some trees that needed taking out. So if you look back behind me, this area here, we cleared uh, some more trees in there last week. We do have more to go, so the chipper will be going back on soon. But the reason I need to take it off is because I need to head up to the top We've got about another 15 stumps or so uh, that were taken out by the excavator that we need to take back into the forest. And I don't really like heading back into the forest with the stumps on the front, with the chipper on the back. It bounces around quite a lot on the trail there. And I'd rather not have that uh, bouncing around all the way there. So I'm gonna take those, I uh, take the chipper off, take the stumps back. Then when I come back down, we're gonna get some more of this foam insulation board that we've been stacking up on in here and uh, I'll be taking that up and insulating the pump tank. Well, at least I say I'm gonna be doing all this. Let's just see how we get on in this crazy heat. So as well as the big materials in the back of the truck, we've also got bags full of smaller pieces. I spent about two hours in Home Depot last week, just in the electrical aisle, just trying to figure out exactly what connections and fittings I needed. Not actually on the wiring side of things, but the conduit. So we've got boxes, we've got cable clamps, we've got weatherproof fittings and uh, fixtures and things. We've got connectors and things like that. Sometimes it's really hard to figure out exactly what path to take, what conduit size to use, all these things. You can design it all out in advance, but then you get to the store and you find that they don't have stock of something, or that the thing you need only comes in packs of 10 and you only need one, and therefore there's a cheaper way of doing it. And trying to find all that stuff online is really hard. Given we had this heat wave last week, I was like, I'm just gonna go to Home Depot and I'm gonna stand in the air conditioning, in the electrical aisle, and figure all this out. And with the exception of two small parts they didn't happen to have there that I know I can get elsewhere, I pretty much managed to get everything we need for the electrical side of things for the septic and the well. Last year I installed some new tie down hooks on the truck in the stake pockets and they were working out really nicely. When we are uh, hauling materials and things, it's really nice to have some extra tie downs. I've already got a handful in the truck bed already, but having some at the bed rail level has proven really useful and I use those a lot for whether it's transporting our propane tanks to get them refilled or like this time just carrying some uh, some heavier material, some longer material that was sticking out of the truck bed. Right, the truck is empty. Next step, get that chipper off. All right, so we have the ballast box on the tractor again. That'll give me some nice counterbalance in addition to the loaded rear tires as I'm carrying those stumps, because some of those are properly heavy. I tell you, swapping three-point attachments on a tractor on your own 
It's not a lot of fun. It's not super easy, especially in this heat. I am just drenched with sweat already. It's, uh, it's so hot here. There's flies buzzing around and uh, things like that. So yeah, it's pretty pretty tough out here today. You may have noticed me folding the seat up on the tractor a few times there. That is because the uh, the switch, there's a, the, a sensor under the seat that is linked to the PTO switch. The PTO switch isn't working properly. I thought it was just lubrication of the cable. I've tried lubricating it and that didn't help. So I think it is actually a faulty switch under there. What it means is that every time you get off the tractor, it thinks the PTO is engaged, even when it's clearly not. And if you have the PTO engaged, you have to either be sitting on the seat or fold the seat forward to, to show that you know it's in PTO mode. So right now, because that switch is faulty every time you get off the tractor, if you don't lift the seat up, the engine dies, which is kind of frustrating. It's on my list of things to fix. Uh, I just need to either get a new switch or, or something under there. So that is why I was folding up the seat in case you were wondering. Now it's time for me to head up and start loading some stumps. This pile of stumps here is what I'm going to be trying to clear today. This is in the path of where the pipe, the pressurized pipe will go from the septic tanks up along here up to the leach field. So these need to be gone before we can put that trench in. Hey, I forgot to fold down the seat that time and the engine didn't turn off. That bodes well for the rest of the day at least. It seems to be it does that after a while, it'll sort of stay in position and then it'll uh, stop working again. So definitely something intermittent under that. And this is how we're going to do it. We're just going to take them one at a time today. It's too hot to start loading them into the cart and trying to the wagon and trying to, uh, to do it by hand. It is tempting to try and take two or three of these small ones at a time. What I found is the road is so bumpy that they just tend to fall off and it ends up taking longer uh, by the time you've got them all back on again and things. They're just taking them one at a time. There's only about 15 here and it's not a long round trip into the forest. So hopefully I can be done here in a couple of hours. So this is our big stump pile in the forest. As you can see, it's getting pretty full. And the question is, where do we keep putting them? There is some more space around the back, so if we need more space, we can take them around there. I've also got to try and do this without getting a branch stuck through the front grill on the Kubota. I've already done that a couple of times, and so far I've got lucky and I haven't hit the radiator, but I don't want to keep risking it. So I'm going to be really careful today. One down, quite a few more to go. Clearing that slash pile, those stumps there, that took me about an hour and a half, which I don't think is too bad going. There are still some small items here. If I try and take those on the tractor forks, they're just gonna fall off. Uh, they're just not, not, uh, not large enough to stay put for that journey. Obviously, if we had a grapple or something like that, that would really help in this situation, but we don't, we just have the forks. So we will load all of this small stuff into our wagon with the ballast box on the back, the hitch uh, ball for the wagon is installed. So then we will use the wagon to take those back and dump those by hand. But we're not doing that today because it is way too hot for that. It is just about lunchtime. So I'm gonna head down and get some lunch. And then after lunch, I think I'm gonna tackle some more septic stuff. So if you look at the tanks here, you can see that I've got the uh, foam insulation on one of the tanks, but not the other one. Uh, so I'm gonna get that done after lunch today. Well, lunch was good and I'm back up here at the build site now. On the way up, I stopped to put some diesel in the tractor. That way, next time we head uh, out to get some materials, we can take that diesel can with us and fill that up again. Now I'm standing up here near our septic tanks and 
my project for this afternoon is to put that piece of foam board on that tank. Much like I did over here, this one is a little different. So this one had a riser built in. So this is our pump tank. That is a 30 inch diameter riser and cover that are above where the pump is. That way, if ever we need to maintain the pump or replace the pump or anything like that, we have easy access through that big riser. So anyway, time for me to get stuck in and start cutting out this piece of insulation. Well, that was quite a simple project. The insulation is on that second tank now. I used a string and a nail in the center just to draw the circle for that one because I didn't want to take that cover off. And even if I did, it's about three inches uh, narrow in diameter than the actual ribbed section underneath. For the other hole, I wasn't able to draw around the risers like I did last time because we're not putting risers on this one and I've used up all my risers already but I'd saved a cutout from the last one. So I used that as a template to draw around and cut out that second hole. It's a good fit. I did have to remove the, the cover itself from this side just so I can actually get the foam board underneath because the cover hangs over the, the edge by I don't know, a quarter inch, half inch or so. And that was enough that I couldn't drop the foam board down. That was what I expected. That was by design and just shows how nice a tight fit that is. Not that it's probably necessary. It's all going to get buried under 12 or 18 inches of dirt anyway, but uh, nonetheless, nice to do a good job. There are quite a few more things we need to do on here. We need to get the inlet plumbed. We need to get the pipe between the two tanks plumbed. We need to put a vent on there and we need to wire up the electrical. However, for all of those things, I want to get some fill around the tanks first. I don't want to have these pipes coming out and just hanging in midair especially when there's going to be an excavator trying to load fill and we're going to be trying to compact around it. That's just a recipe for damaging those pipes and getting in the way. So what we'll do is we'll bring the fill level up higher. You can see uh, on this tank over here uh, where that hole is. We'll bring the fill up to a little below that and that will then give us plenty of space to still work, uh, but it'll allow us to get all of that fill in without those obstacles in the way. Once that's done, I can work on some more projects here. For me now, it is two o'clock in the afternoon. As you can probably tell, I am absolutely dripping with sweat. It's about 90 degrees out here and 70 something percent humidity. It's, it's pretty warm. Uh, so I'm gonna head back down to the shipping container and I wanna start pre-assembling some of the electrical. Technically speaking, I probably don't have to do that today, but frankly, it's a nice do it in the shade, cool weather kind of job. So that's where I'm heading next. There was no shade whatsoever up at the shipping container. So I have come back down here to the RV where there's at least a little bit of shade and I can run inside the RV where the AC is on if, uh, if it gets too hot. So let me walk you through the project that I'm trying to do today. When we have our utility building fully built and everything's up and running as it should be, both the well and the septic pump will run from electricity from that building. There'll be one circuit going out for the well pump and two going out to the septic. One for the pump itself and one to run the alarm. It's important to have those on different circuits, different breakers, because if they're on the same one and it breaks, the breaker trips, then not only does your pump not work, but also your alarm doesn't sound. So it's always sensible to have those on two separate breakers. However, in the short term, we don't have a utility building yet and we will have a well pump and we'll have a septic system long before we have that utility building. Right now, as I, as I film this in August 2022, it probably won't be until next year that we have the utility building built, yet we're hoping to have the septic and the well operational potentially in the next few weeks. So we need an interim solution. And the interim solution that we've chosen is to provide power at point to each of those devices. In other words, we can use our generator or even an extension cord from the electrical backboard when we have that running and connect the well pump and the utility pump directly, sorry, the septic pump 
directly to the generator or that electrical backboard just using an extension cord. This is super manual, this won't be left in 24 seven. This will be a case of, oh, we need to run the well pump to fill the tank in the RV, plug in the, the cord and turn on the well pump, turn it off when we're finished. Same with the septic system. This will be a case of keeping an eye on the level in the septic tank and periodically running that pump to flush it down. This is something that we've okayed with our septic engineer. He's fine with us doing this in the short term as an interim solution. So then the question is, how do we get power to those uh, two pumps in a weatherproof way? And the solution that I've chosen is to use these. These things here are 20 amp inlet receptacles. So rather than being a 20 amp, or so 15 amp I should say, rather than being a 15 amp outlet with a female socket, these are 20, uh, 15 amp inlets with a male plug inside and a rubber cap I can show you that fits over the top and makes that weatherproof again. These designs go on things like utility trailers so you can power them in there. Because of the pumps we've chosen, we've got a relatively small uh, well pump and the head height requirement for the septic leach field isn't too high, we can comfortably run both of those off a 15 amp breaker. That's not an issue. Um, they are both rated to run on that. This inlet is what we need to connect to, but I need a way to mount this. And so what I've chosen for that is these boxes here, these electrical boxes. Now they are deeper than I would like. I was hoping to get away with a two inch deep box. Unfortunately, this inlet receptacle here is actually quite deep at the back and the terminals are all on the back here and I just wasn't comfortable trying to get that into a two inch box. I felt it was gonna to be too tight and it's only temporary. So the fact that it sticks out a little bit more is not a big issue whatsoever. So the plan is basically to feed the power through that inlet receptacle into this box. From here, it's actually going to... It just goes to show exactly how hot it is today. I was trying to film what I'm doing here and the GoPro died because it just got too hot. I can I can sympathize with that, it is, it is warm. So I didn't make a ton of progress, but I did get a few things done. Let me show you what I managed to achieve. First up, I got assembled this box. So this is the electrical box with that 15 amp inlet receptacle on. So I got that installed in there. You can just about see that, that receptacle. And uh, I actually removed the cord on the back of that. I'm just gonna use some wire inside there rather than the one that had the female uh, socket on the other end. The reason being, uh, I can run the wires uh, down to the switch. So this is the weatherproof switch that I assembled and this will sit in uh, a piece of conduit will link the, those two together, it'll sit just below it. And then the wires can come in from the well pump or from the septic pump into there. The reason we're putting a switch on these is, imagine the situation, use the well pump as an example. If we didn't have a switch, we just plugged the generator in directly. As soon as those terminals touch the receptacle, it's gonna try and run that motor. It's suddenly gonna put a ton of current through there. It is a soft start well pump, so it's, it's gonna ramp up slowly, but nonetheless, it's gonna try and turn on as soon as that thing gets plugged in. Same with the septic pump, as soon as I make that connection on the generator, it's gonna try and start running it. I'd rather not do that. I'd rather plug it in with it turned off and then I have a nice on off switch that I can use to turn it on and off. That'll be a little bit easier and probably a little bit safer as well. So that's why we're wiring in those switches. The inlet receptacle is only weatherproof when it's not in use and that's fine for us. We won't use it when it's raining. That is me done for today. I'm not gonna try and do anything more today. It is a beautiful but really hot day. So I'm gonna head up to the gym mainly because they've got air conditioning up there have a shower, get cleaned up, and uh, yeah, look forward to the excavator returning tomorrow.